question number three for our practice test number two. The production of a chemical involves combining reacting gases at moderate temperatures and high pressures, and the equation for the reaction can be represented below. Y of Y in equilibrium with Z of Z. So therefore these little Y's are the coefficients, are little Y's and little Z's coefficients, and the capital Y and capital Z are the things that we're looking at. So um, is we've got a graph here. What shows that um, as we increase pressure, we increase the yield. <laughs> this is ammonia. This should just be yield of compound Z. All right, I've obviously stolen this graph and not thought about it. But anyway, let's move on. This is the increasing pressure increases the yield of Z, but also as you decrease temperature, you increase the yield of Z. So you can see here that at a low temperature, we have a lot more of our yield than if we have a high temperature. Our high temperature shows a lower yield, but all of these, as we move and increase pressure, increases our yield. So reading a graph is a good idea to have a look at it. Anyway, question number A. Is the production of this chemical an exothermic or endothermic reaction? Explain your answer with reference to Le Chatelier's principle. Principal, principal. Um, so what do we know? We need to identify what we have in the graph. Endo and exothermic reactions, in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, that's all about temperature. So, and what happens? We have a higher yield at a lower temperature. Um, there is more um, Z produced at a low temperature. All right, that's from the graph. From our graph, we can see that. So I'm gonna state that straight away because that's something I know. Um, what do we know? That, that means, therefore, the Ford's reaction is being favored at a low temperature. All right, that's from my graph as well. All right, so if we have more Z, that means my Ford's reaction is favored at a low temperature. Now, Le Chatelier's principle, Le Chatelier's principle um, suggests that what is favored at a low temperature? So low temperatures are favored by exothermic reactions as the reaction partially, again, this idea of partially opposition is what we talk about with Le Chilier's principle, partially opposes the decrease in temp. All right, so with all that information, if my low temperature is favored by an exothermic reaction and the Ford's reaction is favored at a low temperature, that means my Ford's reaction, reaction equals exothermic. And I've mentioned Le Chatelier's principle, low temperatures favored by an exothermic reaction is a partially opposing. So partially opposing, that's talking about Le Chatelier's principle. Using my graph, I can get the Ford's reaction as exothermic. And that's a nice rounded way of doing that. What can be said about the ratio of product molecules to reactant molecules or particles? Molecules, particles, same thing. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so again, we need to go to our graph. What does our graph say? It says we have more Z produced, because remember, the ratio of reactant to product molecules, that is all about um, a decrease in pressure or a change in pressure favoring a side, okay? So therefore, more Z is produced at higher pressures. Alrighty, so that's from our graph. Okay, so therefore, what does Le Chatelier's say, principle say about pressure? So high pressures, we're gonna talk about high pressures favor the side with less particles to try and partially oppose the increase in pressure. 
So that's what Lichatilia's principle says. High pressure favour the side with less particles to try and partially oppose the increase in pressure. So what does that mean? That means that um, the products have less particles than the reactants. So the ratio of product particles is higher, well, so the ratio means that we have more product particles than reactant particles. So therefore, um, we don't know the exact ratio, but we certainly know that we have, oh, hang on, I've said that the wrong way around. We certainly know that the products have less particles because the Ford's reaction is favoured at a higher pressure. Now, from in terms of my reasoning, I'm going through my logic from my graph. What does my graph tell me? and where can I go with that? So I'm simply, with these questions which rely on you analysing some information up here, a graph of some kind, I need to write down what I know from my graph as concrete data. <clears throat> I then need to apply Lichatilia's principle to that. I can then come up with a conclusion at the end based on that. Um, that's kind of where my head's at with these type of questions anyway. Um, analyse the graph, write down what it tells you, um, and then write down what Chatillier's principle says, and then put two and two together, come up with a logical answer to the question. Um, and that was question three.